G'day, my name's Daniel. So, this organ you can see behind me is an organ that I rescued from a church and converted to MIDI. So I'm gonna tell you the story of how I did this and how perhaps you can do the same so that organs aren't chucked into the bin. This one was gonna be smashed up and put in the bin, but luckily I rescued it and now it can play music. I'll give you a bit of a demo of how the organ works with how it works. Now I'm just using the St. Anne's Mosley default sample set that you get with the software. This is Saraband by Handel HWV447. So what I want to do in this series of videos is to explain how you go about converting an old organ into a MIDI controller using the Teen-Z microcontroller. But the principles that I will uh, explain will be also relevant to any microcontrollers such as Arduino. So there's quite a few things that you have to understand um, about how the organ works to enable you to use a microcontroller to uh, convert the key inputs or the pedal inputs into a MIDI signal that goes into the computer and, and tells how to work, what sounds to make. So I need to explain how switches work, like how these switches for each key physically works. We need to talk about how the microcontroller actually detects which key that you've pressed. Um, and we need to talk about the matrix arrangement of most keyboards. We need to talk about how to debounce the key presses in the microcontroller to get rid of noise. We need to talk about how the MIDI communication protocol works. And then we need to talk about the algorithm that the microcontroller will use to detect the key presses and how to code that. And then we'll also have to talk about the foot pedal because that uses a different uh, arrangement than, than the keys because it's an analog signal. It's not just an on and off can have many different levels. So there are some of the things that we're going to have to talk about to explain how you can convert an organ to uh, use with MIDI. Another thing we should talk about is the practical aspects of how to actually connect all the wires and get the keyboard uh, connected into your microcontroller. I'll give you an overview of the whole system. So we have our keyboard here with uh, all of our notes on it. And then we have another keyboard on top of that. And then down here we have the pedals. So these three all need to connect to a microcontroller. I'll just call it the micro. This thing here interprets the signals that are coming from the keyboard. Basically it scans like thousands of times a second, every single key. And so as soon as you press one, it knows you've pressed it and, it and the microcontroller works out which key you've pressed. Then the microcontroller sends a signal via MIDI to the laptop. The computer obviously has Helpworks installed and so that generates the sound and then that goes out to your speaker system. Now each of these keyboards has 61 different notes on it. So 61, 61 and then the, the bass pedals has 32. So in total, we have 154 individual notes that the microcontroller has to distinguish between. So that's quite a big task for the microcontroller. So microcontrollers have a thing called digital inputs, which is basically a little solder pad um, or electrical connection.
and all these little inputs are connected to the chip the like the cpu of the microcontroller and then the cpu of course is what does all the work but we said before there was 154 different keys so most microcontrollers won't have 154 different connections because you could like connect each each single uh, digital input of a microcontroller to an individual note on the organ and detect it that way. But no microcontrollers have that many. So that's why the makers of uh, keyboards, musical keyboards, piano keyboards, organ keyboards, use a matrix arrangement to reduce the number of required inputs. All right, so keys are essentially just dumb switches, aren't they? So when you press a key, uh, you're connecting an electrical wire. So let me show you those electrical wires. So under here, we have this bus here, this rod. And when you press the key, uh, that one there is operating, it pushes these two little wires down into the rod, connecting a circuit. And so every single key has those little wires that come down and connect with the rod. And so there's different rods. So you can see those two rods are separate there. So there's another rod and there's another rod. And underneath this other keyboard is the same arrangement. And in principle, the pedals also have that same arrangement. So the idea of a matrix is essentially just a table of data. So let's say we have five five rows, one, two, three, four, five. And how many columns do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are columns, these are rows. And so five eights are 40. So we have 40 different boxes. So each of these boxes, we could say, represents a different note on the keyboard of the organ. So by having five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 different, let's just say inputs for the microcontroller, you can define 40 different uh, notes. So this is the principle of a microcontroller matrix uh, arrangement, except for one of these will be inputs and one of these will be outputs because a microcontroller, each of those digital pins that we talked about here can either be an input or an output. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pins. How many pins did we need? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, we only need 13. So with this, with this microcontroller example, we could uh, have def define up to 40 different notes. So this is the way that you can overcome the problem of the number of uh, inputs being limited on the microcontroller. It's a way of detecting more things than you have inputs. So let's get deeper into how exactly this works. Here's an output from the microcontroller. It's a little pin. Now this can be set to either five volts or zero volts. So you can tell in the programming of the microcontroller, you can tell it at any point in time what you want that pin to be set to, five volts or zero volts. So let's just say we set it to five volts for now. So off this pin, we then have a bus, which is that rod you saw in the photo. And then off here, you have the switches. So let's just put three switches off here. I'll do four actually. So now you can have the inputs to the microcontroller. So let's just sort of input one, input two, input three, input four. So here, we got this at five volts. When you close that switch, all of a sudden there'll be five volts present on input one and the microcontroller can detect that and say, oh, okay. Well, in the coding, you ask it 
you, you write a piece of code and you say, what is the voltage at input one? And it will tell you, is it five volts or is it zero volts? And so if it's five volts, you know that key one is pressed or th this key here. Let's give them names, A, B, C, D. So if, if input one has five volts, you know that key A has been pressed. If input two has five volts, you know that B has been pressed. If input three has got zero volts, like no voltage, you know that it has not been pressed. So this is how you can detect with the microcontroller which switch has been pressed. Now here's where the matrix comes in. So we'll have another bus, which is another one of those rods you saw in the image. And let's put this one at zero volts for now. So we'll do another um, another four switches. Uh, D, E, F, G. Um, we'll just call this one G sharp, shall we? I've missed the sharps on the other ones, but all good. And then we'll call this one, two, three, four. So what we're going to do is we're going to reuse the same inputs. So number one here, we're going to connect that electrically to that. Number two, we're going to connect electrically to number two. And likewise, number three, we'll just go this way. And then number four, we'll connect that to there. So really, I could get rid of these. These here are really just the same inputs of the microcontroller. So if you've set five volts to this bus, and then you receive five volts on input two, you know that this B has been pressed. But if this one's set to zero, and so if that's zero now, and in the, in the program we set this one instead of zero to five volts, if you now then detect five volts on input two, you know that this F has been pressed, not this one. So this is the principle of the matrix arrangement. Now, it doesn't really look much like a table. Here's the table that we drew before. But in, in essence, it really is like this arrangement because up here, you can consider these rows and then these columns. And so we have four columns and we have two rows. So four times two is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So by having two outputs and four inputs, we can control and detect eight musical notes. So this is the principle by which a matrix arrangement works. And if you extend this principle, you can get many more notes detected than what you have uh, inputs or outputs on the microcontroller. So it's really about efficient use of the pins that you have. Now, in the case of my organ keyboard, I have 16 rows per column. So let's draw uh, that rod that we saw in the image. So now we've got 16 switches coming off this. And then the next rod is the same. Now we'll draw in the switches. Number one here is connected to number one there. Number two is connected to number two there. Number three is connected to number three there. You get the picture. So these are all connected together. And then off each of these 16, there is a input to the microcontroller. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And two, so and so this is how it is in real life on the organ but you can see that that is really the same principle as what we talked about before in this case we had uh, two rows and four columns but in this case we have two rows and 16 columns and so this idea can be 
expanded uh, and contracted as much as you like. If you're going to be converting an organ, you need to have a look and see how many columns you have and how many rows you have in your matrix arrangement. So I'll show you how to do that now. So on my organ here, you can count how many keys are present on one of these buses. So you can see that the bus, there's a gap there. So there's 16 notes, so you just count. So where does it start? So this one here, so that's one, two, uh, two, three, four. I'm missing the sharps because they're too far down to press. But you basically count how many there are, and so that's how many rows you have. And then you see how many columns you have. So there's one purple wire here going to this bus. There's another purple wire going to this bus. There's another purple wire going to that bus. And then right over here, there's another purple wire going to that bus. And so we have four buses. And each bus has 16 rows. So four columns, 16 rows. All the 16 rows here are all connected into this ribbon cable. But what's more, uh, they're actually connected across each of these buses, so they're all commoned up, as we as we showed in, in the diagram. So if I come over here, you can see that this ribbon cable plugs in there, plugs in there, plugs in there, plugs in there. And that means that it, it's commoning up each of the um, number one here, and number one on this bus, and number one on this bus, and number one on this bus are all common, as is number two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 16. They're, they're all commoned up as, as we drew in our diagram via the ribbon cable. When you're having a look at your organ, you need to have a look at the circuits, have a look at the circuit diagrams, just see where the wires go uh, so that you can determine what matrix arrangement that you have, whether it's a 16 by four or a or an eight by four or whatever it might be. So that's all I've got time for today. We need to get into a few more details about the matrix arrangement, especially the introduction of diodes and how the actual uh, inputs and outputs of microcontrollers work, but I'll do that in a future video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you.